I recently discovered that there are three types of hallelujah. That the first type of hallelujah is what I call the featherweight hallelujah. The second type of hallelujah is a lightweight hallelujah. The third type of hallelujah is a heavyweight hallelujah. Now, uh, well, well, uh, it depends on the kind of results you are looking for. If you're looking for featherweight hallelujah, you shall featherweight hallelujah. Featherweight result, you shall featherweight hallelujah. If you're looking for lightweight result, you shout lightweight hallelujah. But if you are like me, who know that in the year 2024, I'm not stopping until I get to the top of the mountain and I'm looking for heavyweight result, you will shout heavyweight hallelujah. Hallelujah has the potential to knock out life out of the devil and his grandmother. Heavyweight Hallelujah has the potential to take you from the Mary clay and plant you upon a rock to stand, put a new song in your mouth. Heavyweight Hallelujah has the potential. Shout Heavyweight Hallelujah. We have come to Mount Zion in the company of innumerable angels descending and ascending in this space. For upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the people of God shall possess their possession. Those who want to possess possessions tonight, another heavyweight, hallelujah! Please lift up your two hands and bless the name of the Lord. Worship and magnify him. This God is good. This God is faithful. This God is kind. This God is merciful. Bless his name. All that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works. Oh, bless the name of the Lord tonight. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, Redeemites. Let us exalt his name together. For this poor man cried unto the Lord and he heard him out of his holy mountain and redeemed him from his destruction. Lift up your hands and say, Father, we bless you. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Everybody say, you, you are the Lord. Lord. Let your name, let, let your name be glorified. glorified. We give you glory. We, we give you glory. And honor. Let your name, Let your name be glorified. Authority in heaven, we hallow your name tonight. The supreme majesty that changes now but changes all things, we bless you. You're the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. Immortal, invincible, oh God, and the only wise one. In you we live, in you we move, in you we have our being. You are our The God that uses a basket to fetch water just to confuse the bucket. Who is like unto you, O God? We give you praise and glory. 
You parted the Red Sea and created a dual carriage expressway to confuse civil engineers. Oh, we magnify you. In your dictionary, impossibility does not exist. That's why we call you the monarch of the universe. Hallowed be your name. Thank you for this appointment with destiny tonight. We give you all the praise. Tonight, oh God, as you always do, prove that you have gathered us here tonight. Make it impossible for anyone under the sound of my voice to live the same way they came. Oh Lord, I decrease completely, oh God, that you may increase. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Well, before you see it, another heavyweight, hallelujah. God bless you. You may please be seated. I bless the name of the Lord for tonight. And what I'm about to do is not because of protocol because that's what we do when we are giving an opportunity like this but this is from the depth and the bottom of my heart first to give all the glory to god for the opportunity to stand before you and bring a word tonight i consider this platform a sacred one you know when i was growing up my grandmother would always say to me Kola, don't play on train tracks because big trains pass through there. This is a train track where big trains pass through. I'm not going to play here tonight. Uh, but I want to honor the grace and the anointing of God upon our fathers and mothers of faith who are seated here and some over there for your incredible work and your incredible investment in us. We are who we are today by the grace of God, yes, but by just the amount of investment you have done in some of us. My prayer is that you will reap your reward here on earth. My prayer is that your ministry will move to the mountaintop. And of course, we must celebrate and honor our matriarch and patriarch of faith. <laughs> I was arguing with someone that, you know, I have a mother and father in the Lord, and they said, well, it's not just your father and mother in the Lord in the redeemed Christian Church of God, that they are for all of us. And I believe them. But some people recently said that, um, you know, it's, there, there's nothing like father and mother in the Lord is not scripture. And I said, well, I'm not a spiritual bastard. So I have a father and I have a mother. Please celebrate the grace of God upon our mommy and our daddy, thank you for leading us with such integrity, for leading us with such courage, passion, decade after decade, year after year. I think if we stand up and celebrate the grace of God upon their life, it's not too much. For all that God has used them to do and build, I'm a product of the redeemed Christian Church of God. I go around the world and I hear the great testimonies of what the Lord has done. Let's celebrate God in their lives. We give you all the glory, Lord, for our parents. Thank you. God bless you. You may please be seated. I may disturb you a little bit tonight as we look at the topic from the mountaintop. Because you see, those who get to the top of the mountain hardly stroll to the top of the mountain. They climb to the top of the mountain. Climbing requires effort. And now you get to the mountain top, you can toy to get to the mountain top. You can also get there by grace. <laughs> and you know, there's a difference between labor and favor. Ask anyone who's ever gone to a hundred floor of a building by an elevator and somebody who went by a staircase. So the theme is not a casual theme, it's a supernatural theme. And supernatural themes or topics require supernatural responses from all of us. And so everything we will do tonight, including our shouting, our amen, our clapping, must be supernatural. 
Please hear me and hear me very well. I believe that God is intentional about us this year, 2024. He's always intentional about us, but more so this year. If you didn't know, well, I'm here to bring a breaking news to you. The breaking news is that before December 31st, 2024, your story is that you are a mountaintop dweller. For Samuel chapter 2, I read very quickly from verse 6 to 9. For Samuel chapter 2, from verse 6 to 9. From verse 6 to 9. The Lord killeth and the Lord maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes, to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the word upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. People of God, I'm here to announce to you another breaking news that God is still in the business of raising people. If you don't believe me, just look at our Father in the Lord. If you don't believe me, look at many of the people that surround us where we've seen how they started and where they are today. God is in the business of raising people. But you see, I realize that we have come into a very significant year, this 2024. Let me tell you why. In December, God repositioned us. He didn't tell us where he repositioned us to. He just said he repositioned us. And then he sent us a pregnant word at the crossover service. A prophetic declaration that the wind is blowing. Please, follow me. And then tonight, we are here to talk about the mountaintop. And then I came to a place of understanding that, God, what are you saying? There must be a connection between repositioning the mountaintop and the wind blowing. Ladies and gentlemen, I discovered that the connection between the three is the wind. Let somebody say the wind. Uh, remember what I said. Everything you do tonight has to be heavyweight. Say the wind. So let's look at the wind very quickly. You see, the wind is a great weapon in the hand of Jehovah. Amos chapter 3 verse 4. Amos, Amos chapter 3 verse 4. The Bible said, The Lord formed the mountains and created the wind. The Lord formed the mountains. Created the wind. See the connection between wind and mountain. The wind is a weapon that God uses to advance his agenda. Genesis 8.1. He used the wind to subdue waters. Genesis 8.1. In the hands of the Almighty, who created the wind anyway, he uses it to bring about life. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10. He uses the wind to bring about life. He uses the wind to bring about great destruction that will thwart the stronghold of the enemy. I decree and declare over someone under the sound of my voice tonight, the wind will blow against your enemy this year. Oh no, you didn't hear me. I said the wind will blow against your enemy this year. Well, he uses the wind or he has used the wind to cause a great revival. Acts chapter 2 verse 2. At the upper room, again mounting. So there's a correlation between the wind and mountain. Then I found out that there's also a deeper correlation between the wind and the working power of God. The executive power of God. Let me point out a few things. Five of them. Number one, the wind is invisible. The Holy Ghost is invisible. The Bible just says in, in John 4, 24, John 4, 24, God is a spirit. The results of the wind can be seen and felt. 
the result of the Holy Ghost can be seen and felt. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. We saw the result. They felt it. And we are still seeing it today. I prophesy over someone. As a result of the wind that will blow tonight, generations will see the results from your life. Mm. The wind is powerful. Uh, do I need to tell us that the Holy Ghost is powerful? Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The work of creation. Science, they describe it as the big bang. It was a Holy Ghost bang. It wasn't the big bang. The Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Powerful. Let somebody say power. The wind is unexplainable. The work of the Spirit. Sometimes we don't understand how the Spirit moves. Isaiah 40, 13. Isaiah 40, 13. Who can understand the mind of the Lord? The wind goes wherever it wishes. The wind goes wherever it wishes. 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 11. The same spirit, but diverse gifts. Follow me this evening. I'm going somewhere. And I quickly discovered that the prophetic word by our Father in the Lord on the wind blowing has something to do with our lifting and our repositioning to the mountaintop. The journey to and operations from the mountaintop is a supernatural one made possible by God using the wind. Let me repeat myself. The journey to the mountain top from the valley, from the downhill, from the pit, it is made possible supernaturally by God using the wind. Ladies and gentlemen, I therefore announce to us the year 2024, you are about to be assisted by the wind. Let me disturb you a little tonight. Can you please rise up to your feet? Let's pray a quick prayer. Say, my Father and my God, let the wind blow tonight, blow in my favor, and assist me in every direction until I get to the mountaintop. Open your mouth and pray that prayer quickly. Let the wind blow in my favor, blow in my direction. Until I get to the very top and operate from the mountain top in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before you sit down, please let me hear you say, Wind blow. Say with a heavyweight anointing, Wind blow. God bless you. Be seated for a minute. Now from the mountain top, we don't have time tonight. We'll have done a bit of geography about, about the mountains. But let me quickly tell us that we're not talking about a physical mountain here. Otherwise, the price of mountain uh, plot of land on the mountain might go high from tomorrow because they say that the geo said the redeemer should be living on the mountain top. This is not a physical one. It's spiritual. You see, Mountains are special. Even God himself is fascinated by mountains. He even named some of them after him. The mountains of the Lord. Isaiah 2 verse 2. Micah 4 verse 1. It says the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted far above all other mountains. That's where I want to see it. What about you? Now we are being repositioned and operating from the mountain top. What then happens from the mountain top? Let me give us eight of them very quickly. Number one, direction and instructions come from the mountain top. They are given from the mountain top. Exodus 12, 2, Moses clearly given direction from the mountain top. Your vision, that's Exodus 12, Exodus 24, 12. Exodus 24, 12. I beg your pardon. Number two, your vision is clearer. At the mountain top or from the mountain top, you can see and you can be seen. I bring another breaking news tonight for someone who has been living in obscurity. The reason is because you have not been operating from the mountain top. My single sister, brother, you are not married, nobody is nobody is discovering you. It's because you are not seen. 
this year, 2024, you will be seen. Not only will you be seen, you will see clearly. Ha. Numbers 13 verse 17. Numbers 13 17. The spies that Moses sent, they saw the land clearly from the mountaintop. Revelations 21 verse 10. Revelations 21 verse 10. God wanted to show John the new Jerusalem. He took him to the mountaintop so he could see clearly. No wonder eagles love the top of the mountains. Because from the top of the mountain, eagles see their praise. That's where they decide which animal is fresh enough to be taken. And from the top of the mountain, they come all the way down. This year, 2024, your vision will be vision 2020. Opportunities, you will see them. Breakthroughs, you will see them. Healing, you will see. Joy, you will see. Number three. You hear better from the mountain top. You hear better. The higher you go, the less distractions there are. The quieter it becomes. I remember the early 2000s in Nigeria when GSM just came out and people need to call each other and the, and the network is not going through. We used to say to one another, for those that are old enough to remember, just go on top of something. Yeah, you know, you will be able to connect. Tonight, God is lifting somebody up so that they can connect to the heavens. And once you climb up a little, all of a sudden, there is signal. Somebody has been disconnected from signal all this along. All along. Tonight, you are reconnecting. Oh my God. Let's move faster. Number four, your voice is louder from the mountain top. The world must hear your voice. How would they hear it? From the mountaintop. Let me give you the scriptures for hearing better or, or, or hearing better from the mountaintop. Exodus 12, Exodus 24, 15 to 18. Exodus 24, 15 to 18. First Kings 19, 11 to 13. Elijah heard a still small voice from the mountaintop. Your voice is louder from the mountaintop. That's number four. Joel 2.1. It says, sound the alarm. Let the people hear from the mountaintop. Number five. You find refuge from the mountaintop. 1 Samuel chapter 23 verse 30, 14. 1 Samuel 23 14. That is where champions hide. David was hiding in the, the mountaintop. Saul could not find him. Transfiguration number six happens. At the mountaintop. That's where you are changed so that you can become a change agent. At the mountaintop. Jesus was transfigured at the mountaintop. You taste glory at the mountaintop. Mark chapter 9 verse 9. Transfiguration. Mark 9 verse 9. Abundant resources available at the mountaintop. Genesis chapter 22 verse 14. Genesis 22 verse 14. Abraham said on this mountain, the Lord will provide. And number eight, my favorite one, ladies and gentlemen, at the mountaintop, operating from there is operating from a place of power, from a place of influence, from a place of dominion. This is where the full manifestation of Genesis 1, 28 begins. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, yes, subdue it. Have dominion from the mountaintop. You see, God has been in the business of raising people from the valley to the mountaintop. Moses moved from the valley of low self-esteem to the top of the mountain. Joseph moved from prison, from, from prison to the palace to the mountaintop. David moved from the valley of a non-entity to the mountaintop. Ruth moved from the valley of lust and desolation to the mountaintop. Apostle Paul moved from the valley of sin to the mountaintop. God is in the business of the mountaintop and is here to do it tonight. Now, the crucible of tonight. How do we get to operate from the mountaintop? Hey, 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2 that we read. He said the Lord make it rich. The Lord make it poor. He said the Lord himself can lift out of the dunghill and give us and, 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 and make us inherit glory. Because I'm of flesh, no man can prevail. So first it is by the Lord. 
But how is it by the Lord? There are three ways that God, one of the three ways that God uses to lift to the top of the mountain. Number one is by the hand of the Lord. That's too much to go into tonight. I'm not going to touch that one at all. The two other ones I want to zero on is second, by the word of the Lord. Somebody said the word. It was the word of the Lord that came to David in 1 Samuel chapter 16 that moved him from the Mary clay to the top of the mountain. He got anointed as king. The word of the Lord has the ability to move a whole nation out of slavery into the promised land. No wonder the song that goes, lifted, I am lifted, I am lifted by your word. Out of sin, and sorrow into the presence of the Lord. The word of God can lift. And so in Exodus chapter 3 verse 12, the Bible says that God sent his word through Moses because he was about to move the children of Israel out of the downhill of slavery to the mountaintop. He sent his word and said, let my people go. Tonight, he sent me to send his word to you. He sent his word to poverty. Let my people go. His word to sickness. Let my people go. His word to cancer. Let my people go. His word to depression. Let my people go. His word to oppression. Let my people go. His word to strong men and women of Nigeria. Let my people go. My God, we are almost there. Number two. The wind moves to the top of the mountain. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 11. Elijah was moved by the well wind and the chariots of fire to the top of the mountain. No wonder that Second Kings chapter 2 verse 11. No wonder when it became obvious that the only thing standing before Pharaoh, before the children of Israel and the promised land was Pharaoh. The wind had to be called into action. You can see that in Exodus chapter 4, 14, verse 21. Exodus 14, 21. God told Moses, ah, activate my weapon, the wind. That's what takes you out of obscurity into limelight. All of a sudden, the wind became a weapon that parted the Red Sea. All of a sudden, the wind became a weapon that created a road for them to pass. All of a sudden, the same wind became what destroyed the enemy. I bring a message to someone tonight. You are moving up by the wind. You are moving up by the wind. Whatever is standing between you and, and, your, and, your, and, your, and the top of your mountain, the wind moves out tonight. Let somebody say, let the wind blow. Stand to your feet as we pray tonight. The wind is a weapon. The word is a weapon. The wind is a weapon. The word is a weapon. I said to you, the wind is a weapon. The word is a weapon. Lift up your voice tonight and say, Father, your word has come that the wind is blowing and taking me to the mountain top. I decree and declare tonight, let the wind blow in my favor. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Oh, open your mouth and pray that prayer. Shala payadabaya. Let the wind blow in our favor. Let the wind blow in our favor. The same wind that parted the Red Sea, it was a weapon of destruction. It was also a weapon of lifting. Let the wind blow. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The only thing that stands between you and your mountaintop operation tonight is if you don't know the Lord. When that call is made tonight, young man, young woman, run forward like we have never run before. Because this year, 2024, Atorishe is in town. This year, 2024, the repairer of destiny is here. Lift up your voice as we prophetically sing this song as a declaration. Lifted, I am lifted.